What's up YouTube, Mr. Lime SC here, and today we're doing a guided playthrough of the Elemental Druid. We will start with fire, and then shift over into wind. The main reason we don't start with wind is because, well, you can't really start with wind very well. I guess you could go to level 6 and then try an arctic blast your way through, but... Do you really want to do that? Do you really? I don't think so. So, get your druids fired up! It is time to play along with this. I will try to, of course, go through, explain all of my reasoning, and uh, try and just do it in a decent way so you can follow through, of course, because it is a guided playthrough. So the first thing first is let's take a look at the Druid. The Druid is actually low life gain. He only gains two life per vitality point. So your life total will be a little bit lower. This of course gets made up by if you're running Oak Sage or something like that. So that can be a little difficult for him uh, and just something to note. His frames are okay. They're not like the best frames for like cast rate and stuff of that nature, but they, they're okay. They're not the worst either. It's not like an Amazon. Um, now, for our build, we will be really focusing in this elemental tree with potentially a little bit of dabbling into the summon tree, right? So, summon tree, we may get a grizzly later on. Maybe you'll want to pump Oak Sage a tiny bit. Uh, but for the most part, we'll be sticking right in here. So, to start out, we're just going to have Firestorm and Fissure be our main damage dealers. Molten Boulder is okay, uh, but it's 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 really just useful for a little bit of knockback and a little bit of physical damage. Otherwise, Fissure is really your main damage dealer, and Firestorm can actually kind of shotgun. It has three waves that come out, so if you get up on top of a big boss and get all of the waves of Firestorm to go through it, it actually does a lot of damage. So that'll be our main piece for fire. Volcano is okay to place underneath a boss. Uh, or something that doesn't move a lot, but it's not like amazing, amazing. And then uh, Armageddon, I actually really do like Armageddon a lot. It's actually kind of decent. They It used to be bad and it was terrible. Now it's actually kind of decent. The biggest issue is, are you really running it and needing it? Not a ton, but if you want to do just a Fire Druid playthrough, you can actually really stick with Armageddon and get a decent amount going right there. In terms of the wind tree, we'll be going with Cyclone Armor, uh, Twister for the Synergy, Tornado, and Hurricane. Mostly focusing on these three over here, though. So, that is our Druid. Let us go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and set players 8. I pretty much on every character really like to have players 8 in the early stages. Because the Blood Mord is just not that dangerous. And you can pick up way more experience by doing that. So all you do is type slash players space 8. This is, you can do this on any character. If you are offline, if you're online, that would be simulating that there are 8 players in the game with you. Now those would be unpartied players that are doing their own thing, but it is still kind of simulating that. So it just allows you to get more experience. But of course, the monsters gain more life, more damage, all of that to uh, combat as well, right? To combat the increased difficulty. So we can continue just kind of smacking some dudes down. I don't really want to dip into the Den of Evil on Player's 8. It just kind of takes a long time and can be difficult. If you ever see the path split like this in the Blood Moor, we know, hey, the Den of Evil's right back here. As you learn maps, that can always just be a little helpful. But you know that if it ever splits for Bloodmore, that that's at least going to take you towards the Den of Evil in one of the directions, right? So, I'm going to kill a couple things here as well. We can use our Firestorm just to get a little bit of damage in. And we'll just continue forward. And before I go back, we'll grab the waypoint. I will change to players 1. And then we will head back here. Now let's see if we have any gold. It doesn't seem like we really have a lot. But we can pull up a little bit. And that gets us four mana potions, which we'll just have to deal with. So we have players one, and we can take this back. And go into the Den of Evil. And again, we're just 
doing Firestorm right now. Yeah, sometimes you find things worth a lot of gold, sometimes you don't, but getting a few mana potions really helps. If not, I mean, you can still go around and just club things to death and use a little bit of your, you know, mana as it, as it comes, but not a huge deal. Druid's homeless, lore is accurate, yeah. I never knew Firestorm buffs so well from synergies. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like really, it really buffs up nicely. Yeah, you have 23% from Molten Boulder and Fissure. So that's why maxing Fissure and then Firestorm is really kind of uh, an extremely powerful opening. Go ahead and put another point in Firestorm. And we'll just continue with Vitality. We'll honestly just continue with Vitality for the most part, except when we want to get a little bit of strength so that we can use strength for our character uh, just to equip, you know, like a regular size belt with 12 potion slots and stuff. You forgot the mosaic rune in your video? That rune was crazy. Yeah, I was really focusing on 110 and everything in there and not the new, new things, but you are correct. I did not put mosaic in my How Rune Nerds Ruined the Game video, and that one almost deserves its own video. How this one rune word completely changed the game. You know? It's like spirit levels of disgusting, but it, even in a weirder, different way. Because it added a whole new cap on top. I mean, it can kill players like 2,000 content. Which isn't even possible without modding. Getting back into the up 2 can't find the resources you made in the past. It was a reset guide based on how many people were in your party. Oh yeah, I remember making that video. That's definitely somewhere on my YouTube. Um, I feel like if you look up Mr. Llama YouTube reset party guide, I would Google those like keywords like that. And I believe it should get it for you. That would be my guess. Of course, Emroy. Some, if someone in chat finds it, please post it in there for them. Yeah, we have this one monster we left here. Okay. True that, Mike. Good day. Exactly, Clint. All right, so we can sell a bunch of things here. A lot of things you don't even need to identify. They're still just worth good gold. Did you try non-expansion ladder? There is no rune words. Builds with rare items. Amazing. Non-expansion ladder does kind of bring you back a little bit to it. We'll go back to players eight, by the way. More vitality, more firestorm. Pretty simple. Uh, yeah, maybe we should do classic ladder. Maybe that's the way to go. And the main thing that I'm focusing on when I'm running around killing, like, sure, I'll still kill large groups of things. And that's something this character does extremely well, is killing just large groups and masses. Um, but I'm also really going to focus on the unique monsters, like you just saw there, and all of their minions, as those have a lot of experience. They grant 500% experience. So it's just worth so much more. Have a good time at work, Andreas. Okay. Now, I am filled up on potions. Having a decent number of mana potions is pretty important. Health potions, not quite as much. Uh, this character generally isn't going to get hit as often, and he'll be he'll do all right but having you know a few health pots is still always good and then just some stamina potions because the early pieces of the game stamina uh, just is in a tougher state we will say more firestorm more vitality exactly beaten 
And there are the stones. Now, you do need to be a little bit careful against Rakanishu, especially if you're a lower level. If you're level like three against Rak Rakanishu, don't even bother. But here you can see I'm level five, and he still does a decent amount of damage to me. The big issue is you're ticking so much when you hit him with your Firestorm that he's just gonna hit you back for a lot of damage. So just be careful when fighting him. You may wanna wait until you're even level six and then you can get Molten Boulder to help you out. But he has very nice experience. But that is kind of one of the first places you'll really be like, oh wow, I just died. <laughs> Uno Emi, thank you very much. So, something to think about and consider. You may want to face him on Players 1, you may just not want to face him at all, or you may want to wait till you have level 6 so you can at least Molten Boulder and knock him back. Now, something that you'll have to learn as you play through is Molten Boulder does not always go through and also at the same time does not always, always uh, blow up. So you'll note in some monsters it starts knocking them back and keeps kind of like going through, right, with knocking back the monsters. Other monsters, such as these guys, it will actually explode on impact. Which monsters it does that, you just have to kind of figure out over time. I'm putting more points back into Firestorm, by the way, and we'll continue Vitality. So, which is better? I would say having it push is better than having it explode. So, oftentimes against monsters that it explodes on, such as these guys or the Gargantuan Beast, whatever, you're not going to be... There. Um, you're not going to want to use Molten Boulder, but instead just push through with this. Now here you can see Molten Boulder knocks those guys back, and when it does the knockback, you get the damage for each of those knockback hits. So on top of making you safer because the monster is no longer near you hitting you, more Firestorm, you are also getting more damage out there. Now, you do not need to exactly run this build as I'm running it. Uh, you, you have the option a little bit of either putting a couple more points into Molten Boulder, which I may still add like one more point, or you can just full pump Firestorm. The downside of Molten Boulder is that you do not get synergy. Um, you get a little synergy to Firestorm, but you don't get the synergy to Fissure which is going to be our main damage dealer in a couple of levels. The upside is, when you use Molten Boulder here and there, you're going to get a decent amount more damage for just having really one or two more points. So it does have its benefit. And again, when you get kind of these longer groups, you can just lay it down in there. Grab the charm. 10 FCR, 5 to mana. We will take that. That'll be useful later on, but also a little bit early. And now we are in the Black Marsh, and what we're doing in the Black Marsh is looking for the tower, because of course there are the beautiful rune words. We also want the waypoint. Stealth and as well leaf. Now, Leaf, you're saying, wait a second, hold on, Mr. Llama. Leaf is three to Sorceress's fire skills, right? Why would we have that on a Druid? Well, what if I told you it's three to fire skills itself? And that, fire skills, does not mean skills within the Sorceress fire tree, but rather oh, skills that are fire damage dealing, tagged with fire. Dragon, thank you very much. And that is what it is. So, now, plus three to fire skills means Firestorm, Molten Boulder, Fissure, Volcano, Armageddon are all going to give you that benefit. Again, another point into Fissure. 
How will you handle fire immunes later? You will skip them, yes. Or you can kill them with your Molten Boulder, Armageddon, Volcano combinations, as those have a physical component as well. So Molten Boulder is useful in that regard. Lunch boxing, thank you very much. Another point goes to Firestorm. And you can see the power of Molten Boulder right here, especially as you use it on monsters that will get knocked back. Now I'm at level 10. I'm gonna go ahead and go up to 25 strength now. It doesn't super matter, but hey, you know, maybe we can find uh, something that it does some nice stuff for essentially. Right, we can wear a wolf head now and stuff. Poison Creeper, that's really nice. Maybe we'll get a Poison Creeper to come join the party. Poison Creeper is also, like, extremely good, actually, early on in the game. So, we're uh, not upset about it. Renee, thank you. You forgot about YouTube voice? It's not a real thing. Just same voice as always. And we'll go more Firestorm for our last level before level 12. And we'll save some rejuves. And now that I have 25 strength, again, everything is going to go into vitality. With the exception of if I find a piece of gear that I really enjoy, then I will use... This, add a little more strength or something to make sure I can wear that gear. But sometimes it's just too much, right? You're sitting there and it's like, this needs 75 strength. And you're like, I have 25. I don't want to dump 50 strength. That's 100 extra life I could have. Base life. Not worth it. Now, one thing to remember... Congratulations, you've made it down to the Countess. We're also level 12, we're getting Fissure. But congratulations, you've made it down to the Countess. What should you always remember to do? Go back to Players 1. You can even spawn her, if you would like, on Players 8. But you do not want to kill her on Players 8, otherwise... She will pretty much guaranteed drop a single rune for you. Whereas if you kill her on players one, you have chances of two runes, three runes, even four runes, uh, much more often. And there you can see we got three runes from her by shifting down the difficulty. After that, we can go back to players eight and continue to gain a lot of experience. Two to energy is nice. And we'll head over here. I, I really want to get at least uh, some sort of belt in. And that's really nice. 12 to cold resist. We will go ahead and keep that. And there's four more cold resist. Pretty much all resistance charms. Like I may get rid of this large charm later on because it is only 4%. But 12% right there. It's not bad. You're going to be keeping a lot of these charms as you go along. We'll put some of these away and go ahead and just have a little space and we can keep going. Now, again, I said we are on players eight here and the beauty, the insanity, the whatever you want to call it, ooh, experience shrine, of the druid is that he is so strong. The elemental druid is so strong. This is where you go, how strong is he? He's so strong that he can play the entirety of normal on players eight easily. And honestly, even nightmare strong and is he? thank you. I mean, it kind of came in, you know, a little later than this. I appreciate it. He can basically run through, I would say up to act four of nightmare completely on players eight with no problems whatsoever. Now, what is the good news about this? You get to murder everything with insane amounts of damage and get huge levels 
So by nightmare, you're going to be sitting there enjoying, you know, level like 50 something with ease. It's not even going to be a struggle to get level 50 there. You're a newbie dumping all the strengths you can wear Saigon set. Saigons doesn't really do a lot for this character. I mean, the nice thing is there is some resistances and stuff on it, which can be helpful. And good fast run walk on the boots. But overall, it's not a huge boost for this one. And again, players one. So we are looking for, I talked about stealth and leaf. I don't think I mentioned the runes though. Tal, Eth, Tear and Rao are the runes we are trying to find here. Now it's not end of the world if you want to run without them, if you don't have them, but it can be nice to get them. And again, at least up to level 17, farming in the tower is pretty nice. So here we can see we have Tal and Eth. I don't have a two open socket armor, so let's go ahead and shop one. One to like, Anthropy, and wear off. Sure, I'll go ahead and just put that guy on. So we can shop for a two open socket armor. This is a two open socket armor that is not mechanics. What does this mean? It means it is gray, not blue. Sometimes you will have an item that you shop that has sockets but it's a blue magic item. That is not what we are looking for. Okay, so we've got ourselves that. And now we can additionally go shop ourselves a two open socket staff for the leaf. And we wanna find one that's a little cheaper. There's 4,300 gold. I'm gonna shop in and out really fast. You can always just go out of town and back into town. And we'll look for another to open socket staff that, you know, maybe is 168 gold or something of that nature. Good day. 168 gold. That will work for me. Okay. And because the rune word is tier row for leaf, we can actually put the tier rune in already and start benefiting from that tier room. And this is very... We're back to players eight, by the way. This is very nice overall for your character and for the game here. Right, so we can go in and start killing things. And the beauty of the Druid, like the actual beauty of the Druid is, especially Fire Druid, he doesn't take a lot of mana. His mana use is actually pretty low. And with a single tier rune, and because Fissure can murder so many things, you actually can just like cast a Fissure and then gain back all of your mana cost from what you've killed and you barely have to use mana potions. So it's actually super nice. Six to life is way too low. Guided playthrough on finding a girl, wife, mother who wants to have a child with you. Oh man. Um, it's a tough one. I mean, y'all saw my dating profiles. Get lucky. Probably the best bet. I'll pick up the rings and keep going. Ton of RNG luck. Yeah. Grand charm. Sure, why not? We'll take a look see. If I can do it, so can you. I mean, heck, even Emroy apparently did it. <laughs> Who would have thought? 
Back to players one before we kill. At this point, we just need a Rao rune. We could even just grab the Rao rune from later on. That we always get a Rao rune in, in Act 5, right? Rao or Tal. There's another Tyran. If we want even more mana per kill, we could put that in a helmet. Good day. Don't need any added cold or attack rating. Yes. And let's get a couple. It's Toxie. What up, Toxie? How's uh, Discovery going? Back to players eight. And we'll go ahead and go one more time down to the depth. We have a nice experience shrine. Let's get a little bit here. Just be careful with the next batch of cookies. <laughs> I'm going to make Moo eat them first. So anything Emroy would have done to me, he's going to have to do to Moo and to my baby. Let's see if he wants to mess with them then. Now something that can also be nice when fighting these bosses or something that's good to do is take a look at what the boss, like his affix is, or her, or them. Take a look at what their affix is, right? So you wanna look and see, are they cursed? Are they, you know, extra fast? Are they aura enchanted? Many of these you could just see, but are they cold enchanted? Because that can affect how you're going to approach and fight said boss. Right? Like, there's many bosses that... So I'm picking up the wolf heads, just, you know, seeing if we can find something nice. There's many that, you know, okay, cold enchanted archers, maybe I don't want to fight. On this character, yeah, you can kind of fight it all, because again, this guy's just so strong, but... Even still, do I want to dodge around? Do I want to stand close to them? In 32 months of watching Llama, I found one beer. Here's to number two upcoming. Let's go get it. Players one, let's look for a uh, Rao rune here. Tal, Tal, and a dagger. All right, well. I think we're just gonna have to use the dagger here. So we actually have three Tal runes, which is a Rao rune, right? So that can always be really helpful. We also can now make our stealth. So there is our stealth, 25 faster run walk, cast rate, and hit recovery. Pretty much the main three pieces of why we use it. The other pieces are just kind of nice to have. And then we have our tier Rao, which we can get once we get to Act 2. Oh my gosh, it's ethereal. That's funny. But, we have also found Gold Dagger. <laughs> Not only that, but also Ethereal Gold Dagger. Nice for the Ethereal Grail. Now you would think, oh, that's terrible, Llama. Now you're going to lose the durability. But no, remember, you only lose durability when you actually stab with the weapon. So, as a caster, I never lose the durability. Instead, we're just going to sit back and enjoy a hundred magic find. Which is a ton of magic find. If you can get even a small amount of magic find, I'm going to put this tier rune in my helmet just for the mana for kill there. If you can get even a small amount of magic find, it will do a lot for your character. The biggest, most important, strongest point of magic find that you can get is the first one, right? So that's why sometimes I'll just go shop and I'll just look for gloves or boots that have like 10% magic find, 15% magic find, whatever it is. Because that raises my magic find from zero to 10% which is the same as raising it from like 350 to 400%, right? Probably even more important if you were to go that way. So getting that stuff uh, is, getting the magic find early is super nice. 
and will be very helpful for us later on, potentially, in finding some really nice gear. Yeah, and I have my left click set up with D, C, and X, Firestorm, Molten Boulder, and Throw, so I will never have a melee attack on it. So I don't have to worry about stabbing and breaking all the durability. Scripted run. Yeah. Amulets, uh, yeah, so th the dropping of rings and amulets is not going to change from magic find, but the quality of them, if they're rare, magic, unique set, will change. Will this playthrough include historical facts about Celtic druids? Um, they were, they were people uh, who, no it will not. Thank you for asking. It's a good question, though. Oops. Do you have to finish all quests to move on to the next act? You do not. You only need to finish the Phases final quest. Pingala, 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 pingala. Thank you for the Bezos bucks. Appreciate it. Now, sometimes to finish the final quest, you need to complete other quests along the way. Act 1 is not like that. You can just run straight to Indario, kill Indario, and you're fine. Act 2, you have to collect the cube, you have to collect the staff, morph the staff together. You technically don't have to kill the summoner, but you have to at least go past the summoner. Um, you know, there are multiple pieces. A little bit of fire resist on those boots. Yes, please. Act three, you have to do multiple. Act four, you can just go to the end. Act five, you have to at least do the second to last quest, which has the ancients. So here we go. We've come across a fire enchanted that is fire immune, our first fire immune of the game. What are ways we can deal with this? One, we can just ignore it. We can just leave. Two, we can use our molten boulder. You can see it'll take a little bit of time, but we can kill him through just Molten Bouldering. And of course, if you had multiple points in Molten Boulder, this would work even faster. Three, you could slap him in the face with your, you know, gold dagger or whatever, if you really want. Yeah, you also don't have to like kill the smith to take the hammer. There's a lot of things in this game where you don't have to actually do a lot of the other pieces. You can just kind of go in, grab whatever, saving Ani. You can just touch Ani. You don't have to kill the boss at the end. Probably does, Joshua. Someone in YouTube chat said YouTube is less chatty than Twitch. Well, I mean, you have to remember, I've been streaming on Twitch for, what, nine years now? Oh, what a terrible map. And I've been streaming on YouTube for a month? <laughs> so, A, we kind of have a lot more people from Twitch that have been here around, you know, around here a lot longer. And there's just been more time of building that audience and building the people there. B, you know, there's also uh, another point in Fissure, more vitality. YouTube Live, I would say, probably in general is not as popular. I don't, I don't know actually how many people watch YouTube, but... 22 months, woot. I mean, may, maybe it is extremely high. I'm not, I'm not actually certain. Thank you, punk. But I would definitely say Twitch's live streaming is built more around live streaming, right? 
YouTube was built more as a VOD service. That's kind of now right there. YouTube should get TTS. YouTube has TTS. All hype chats will be TTS'd. Or I should probably just put my donation link, honestly, over there as well. Don't know why I haven't done that. Exclamation mark. Donate? Ooh, maybe that'll actually work. Because the bot works over there now, I think. 586 on YouTube now? That's fantastic. I'm, I mean, I'm more than, uh, more than pleased and surprised at how many people from YouTube have already found their way to watch. And it makes me really, again, I know that, you know, overall on YouTube I'm losing subs because uh, not everybody wants to get blasted every day with, like, go live notifications. But there are a lot of people that get enjoyment out of watching it live, so I'm happy. Happy to uh, continue it. Less ads on YouTube? Well, I don't run ads on Twitch. So, it's the same number of ads. Everybody will get one ad one time when they come into the stream because I can't change that piece. Otherwise, nothing nothing changes. You figured out a saying how to turn off YouTube live notifications? Yeah, I just wish everybody knew that. Twitch runs their own ads, though? No, they don't. So, Twitch has, or YouTube, or creators, whatever, have found a way to uh, convince everybody of a lie. <laughs> All of the ads that you see on streams are being run by the creators, with the exception of the first ad. The first ad, YouTube will run no matter what. And or, and or Twitch will run no matter what. I can't. I cannot change that. That is built in, and just exists. All other ads that you see during a stream are because the creator pushed a button or had a bot push a button that said run an ad. What about the side ads? Uh, I. I don't actually know about the side ads. I Those are kind of new. I think that is still a part of them pushing a button that says ads. But you'd have to tell me because I don't run them. So if there are those, then I don't control those. Wow, it's right there. What an annoying map. <laughs> Unlam RPG as fast as we can. Partners are different. I'm forced to play ads? I don't think you're forced to play ads. Now, if you sign an ad agreement with Twitch, like if Twitch is paying me money. You know, let's say Twitch was to pay me $100,000 a year to stream on their platform, they would in there have requirements for ad running, yes. I hate top streamers playing 17 minutes of ads every hour. Exactly. People gotta pay their bills, ads are ads, you don't get mad. I, I'm not telling you if you should get mad or not about it. I'm just trying to give the information that is they are running that it is not the platform running it they might set it up through the platform because like twitch has a thing where if you run you know x amount of ads now this is players eight but and is really weak to fire damage so i don't even mind killing around players eight to be honest Dariel will want to change it. And Dariel, whatever. Okay, Dariel. 
this, this. Gloves seem good. Pick up an emerald. Alright, and act one is done. Good day. Greetings. And Dariel has minus 50% fire resist. Correct. Let's go identify all our items. And these aren't really that great, but we have nothing else in that slot, so we'll use them. 15% magic find. I will happily use that. We'll just keep boosting up our magic find. Added damage, added damage. And we'll put away some chip gems. Chip gems can just be nice to store to get a little bit of money later on. We'll buy a big boy belt, so now we get 12 slots. We'll fill up our potions. And we'll give ourselves a clap. Act one is completed. Why don't you pick up every yellow item instead of just certain ones? Because I know which ones I'll potentially use and which ones I won't. Okay, we got a quick turn off there, so we'll head this way. If we had our Rao rune, we would make Leaf Staff right now. We don't have the cube yet. It'll be down here, so we can't make it until we go down here. And because I ran out of portal scrolls, I'm going to actually head back to get more. Now, oh no, I can't buy more here. What can I do? I can actually sell this and buy it back. And now it is full. Just a fun little tip. We will be switching to NATO later on, yes. Though, with how powerful fire is, you can definitely take it really far if you would like. Now, having a 115% magic find, I am expecting to find a couple other nice drops as we run through this. Maybe some Hisaris boot, Hisaris belt, maybe some blood fist, maybe gorefoots or something like that. But I imagine we will find a couple other nice items with this. True that, Fatima. Yeah, it just helps you from having to walk to Drognan, which can be annoying. We just found this goal rune or this goal uh, dagger off the Countess. Super lucky. Nagel ring could drop exactly. Impossible. Thanks for providing all these nice guided playthroughs. Of course. Have a fun little tip from me as well. Here goes. Thank you so much, Labor, and oh! Marcin Wallach. I am sorry. I don't think it showed up or I missed it when it did show up. Re-upping their membership on YouTube. Thank you so much. Did it show up and I just missed it? Potentially. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you to everybody on YouTube for hitting the like button on this stream to help the uh, algorithm get fed. If you don't feed the algorithm, it may grow old and die. So, you know. Easier to gamble gold than drop it? True. Okay, we'll grab our cube, we'll grab this. YouTube voice. Thank you, 1904! It is an honor to so now we have three Tal runes, which of course we can cube together and make a Rao rune, and we can make ourselves a Leaf Staff, which again does have some mana per kill and cold res, of course, there, but it's got three to fire skills. That is its beauty right there. All of these are now buffed up a ton, and again, ooh, all res six, we'll take that. You can look around for just some nice, easy things if you want Hello. to change anything out.
Poison Creeper crashes your game. Interesting. Lama needs likes badly. I mean, I'm not like desperate, you know, but like, just like give me a like, you know, just like a little bit. Just a quick, a quick hit, just a little, and then we're good. That's all. Been grinding, death must die and feel the urge to finally make the wind druid. Get it. I gotta pay her back. It's I clicked like because I didn't want to see desperate llama. Very kind. Champion Beetles are a very nice experience, so we will enjoy that. But again, still just cruising on Player's 8 for right now. Find a waypoint. Look for the hole. No more goal. I mean, you know, honestly, we're so strong at this point. I'll probably just like swap back and forth between using goal or using the leaf depending where we're at and how much damage we need. But magic find is just like super fun. So we have the waypoint so we can actually go ahead and go to the lost city now as well. It's honestly really tricky. And remember, it is on death as well that magic find applies. So you can always keep it as a swap item. I can lay down my damage with my fissure or my firestorm, whatever it is. And then as soon as something's about to die, swap over and we're good. And just continuing vitality. Nice and easy. Trident. Actually a really fun one. We're gonna pick it up and maybe give it to a mercenary. Get the nice uh, slows target for the Razor team. We don't even really need it, but... Countess runes are not affected by MF, no. Runes in general have no effect from Magic Mind. Best base for Chains of Honor? Uh, I mean... It just depends. Depends what you want. I feel like I've made them in a large variety of things. Archon Plate is probably where I, I end up making it most of the time. Impossible. Dusk Shroud, yeah, plenty of people, especially if you're doing like make it for the Sorceress. Dusk Shroud can be solid. I think that's where my current one is. A Falcon. Don't need that either, but you can see we're dropping uniques left and right, man. Uh, yes. We have a lot of magic find. Okay, sell so these guys, put that over there. And we'll go ahead and grab a mercenary. Again, we don't really need it. But uh, why not? We've got a Razor Teen and it's a fun item, so we'll give it to him. But we do enough damage on our own that we're, we're pretty fine. So Maggot Lair is right here. Now I'm gonna go to Players 1 before I go on the Maggot Lair because it can actually be kind of nasty trying to hit stuff in the Maggot Lair. 
Molten Boulder is pretty solid, which a lot of times is why it's also fun to have multiple points of Molten Boulder for down here. But you can see, even with just the one point we have, it oftentimes will go through and take everything out. It just makes it a little easier. Then in these open areas, you can cast Fissure, but you're not really going to be able to Fissure very well in the small areas. What's the best way to get the runes to craft infinity? Uh, lower caress runs, for sure. I'm assuming you're asking single player. If you don't want to do all that, Trav, Cows, Chaos, all of those are pretty decent. Even going like Arcane Sanctuary. You're doing runards for two CT you can fit into your top fenders as well. Yeah, I mean, CTA I, I've put as the strongest Runeward in the game because every single build uses it. But it doesn't, the prop, because it takes over your weapon swap, your offhand, it's not as big of a deal. Like, it's not like it's limiting all of the stuff that you really have there. It does limit those things, but. You know, it's, it, I feel like it doesn't quite hit as brutal. We have thought Enigma is number one. I mean, the thing is, Enigma is number one for biggest offenders, probably. Well, Spirit as well, but... But in terms of, like, strongest, every single character, with the exception of the Barbarian, who already has Battle Orders, uses CTA. So, just from the case of it being completely required by every single build and character, I think it gets a... Uh... Even on single player, yeah, it's just... Whereas Enigma, not every character actually uses it. You have some characters that use Fortitude, or some characters that use Chains of Honor, or something else along the way. But all those characters are still using CTA. Best way to experience and build Barbarian? You'll have the best experience with a sing barb, I would say. If you look up my guide on Icy Veins, exclamation mark guides for sing barb, and kind of like playing through there, you're just using Warcry. I also have a guide to play through with it. It is a very fun build. If you want to be melee and go physical, Honestly, Frenzy is not too bad, um, and Whirlwind now is actually really not too shabby either. I, I enjoyed my Whirlwind playthrough, though it's a little bit more difficult. So, those would be kind of the recommendations, but you, you can get through with any of them. I've got guided playthroughs of all of them, and yeah. All right, let's just uh, sell that. And again, I like to still look just and see what we have for items, because sometimes you can find a nice item there. Let's transmute and talk to Drognan. What is the lowest map runs? Do you think you've farmed LK and found their for infinity? Oh, man. Uh... hard to say exactly probably a few thousand maybe like two thousand or something three thousand probably like three thousand because let's see i can do about four runs a minute so in an hour that's 240 runs essentially you know you can get like a thousand runs in four hours. So I probably found them in like 12 hours would be my guess. This is like the fastest. Rare chain booties. Maybe a reason to go to 30 strength. Eh. 
Sing Barb is quite strong, and then when you get like spirit swords and stuff, really strong. 15 seconds to run? Sounds about right. I'm actually gonna go grab that staff as well. I want a little more gold. Do I have a Discord room I can join? Exclamation mark Discord. Oh, I also want to go players one in the Arcane Sanctuary. Another pretty brutal place. Palace music, so good. Probably my favorite music in the game. Did I get the waypoint? I hope so. If not, we'll be going through the palace again. You've never had the experience with Singer? You feel like he does negative damage? He used to be worse, but he really got a nice buff um, in D2R. So now he, he does really well. Not first way. I can't carry Grand Charm. Tried Sing Barb in 109 without spirit and it was so bad. It was still the best thing, but yes. Some ideas for the next man versus stream. Uh huh. Passive Llama can't kill anything for a time. Ugh. True voice must speak in an over the top announcer voice. <laughs> colorblind play in one of colorblind settings. This was not designed I'm actually used to do announcer voice. That actually was a really old man versus stream uh, thing that we had. Passive Llama is. I, I think the issue is like. If it's ancients or, you know, a lot of times it'll just freeze up. It's like, well, I, okay, I just, like, won't pop the ancients then. I'll just, like, sit here. Used to do poetry too? Yeah. So, kind of the issue there. Colorblind settings could be fun if the viewers didn't hate it. Dance Dance Revolution pad for MVS. Bro, I can barely play with a controller, let alone a DDR pad. Alright, not second way. Adoptive Pixel needs to come back. Adoptive Pixel is the worst thing ever. Okay, a little more cold resist. Why not? Dance pad would be awesome for MVS. I mean, I don't think I would get anywhere and do anything if I had a dance pad. Stream is rip. What? I'm not seeing any issues with the stream. Stream is looks fine to me. We back? Okay. Tiny little pop. Quick stutter and we out. Alright. That happens here and there. YouTube, YouTube little freeze there because Twitch was fine. Everything was fine on that side. All right. Third way it is. And just like we called it, Hisaris Boots, baby. Hmm. We'll go up to 30 strength. And now we can use his hardest boots, and we can also give our mercenary eyes and hearts. Why not? This is the power of 
Magic find. All right, black. Back to players eight. Cyrus boots are great. 20 minutes run walk and 25 fire resist. If you won the lotto, would you buy the rights to D2 and make an expansion? That could be fun. Wonder what they would charge. This is why we tell people to gamble low-level gold daggers. This is why. If you, there's just so much magic find, you're just bound to get some of these items. Okay, and we'll go players one. For Mr. Duriel. And if we want, we could totally... Uh, Give our mercenary some like thawing potions. We could give ourselves thawing potions, but honestly, we're gonna do so much damage, it's not really needed. And remember, it's on kill that it applies, so we'll do our damage first and then swap over to gold dagger and kill him. Nice and easy. Just like that, Act 2 is done. Give yourselves the clap. Thank you, Austin. Greeting. I will find you. Dang. Nothing on it. We'll stop by and pick up a couple stamina potions, just because Act 2 is really annoying with those. And we'll continue forward. Can you gear up an Act 3 mercenary to be viable? <sighs> I mean, there's probably some way you can, but I don't want to be the one that has to do it. <laughs> More Fissure, and we're level 22. What are we going to do? We are going to shop a teleport staff. Now, what is a teleport staff? It is a staff that has teleport charges on it. Is this charges? No. This is three to teleport sorceress only. So since we are below level 24, we can just go as such. Good day. In and out, we can also use a uh, waypoint and TP back and forth, but essentially leave town and come back. And all I have to do is look at the staves that are red. If it's red like this, you can see it'll have Required level 24. So as long as I'm sub level 24, I can look for a staff that has level one teleport 33 out of 33 charges. So if it has that, then we are good to go. Now, something that you may say is, hey, Mr. Lema, uh, I you don't have enough gold for that. And you would be correct, which is why we saved up those chipped gems. Now, of course, you can ferry some gold over from your other characters and stuff if you would like, but I don't have that option. I've got some staves here, and I can instead roll with three chipped gems. And a staff, or a wand, or whatever it is. And roll it, and it will randomly re-roll it, potentially giving us some nice staves with some money. I can then take these staves and sell these staves for money to hopefully get us enough money. Now it seems like we may be a little bit short, but we do have some runes I don't super care about as well. And we can try selling all of these pieces and seeing if it'll get there. And we go here. And for 71,000, we're able to purchase this. Now, oftentimes the cost of this, if it has no other skills on it, will be about 16 to 17,000. 
if it has one lower level skill, it'll be generally, you know, like 45,000. If it has a bigger skill like teleport, 75,000. And sometimes you'll find it around like 105,000. Beyond that, you may see them for like 180,000, 250,000, 350,000 if they've got like two to blizzard and all of these things. Uh, so if that's the case, you may just want to re-roll. It can take a little bit of time. I'm going back to players eight, by the way. It can take a little bit of time to get the teleport charge stick. Sometimes it takes one run. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, right? You just got to kind of go back and forth with the shopping and see what happens. So don't get discouraged. It is uh, worth the time that you're going to be investing in it. This, I promise you. It will not only be useful for skipping things here and there. Ooh, Angelic, that's kind of nice. But it will also be useful for saving your life in difficult scenarios. Impossible. To recharge the charges on it, you can either A, just repair it, or B, you can use an Ort Rune plus a chipped gem in combination with it in the cube. And so you cube those three together and it will repair all the charges. That would be nice, Surf. Now, if you are already level 24 before you've gotten to the point where you would go shop that, that's okay, but now you're just going to have to look at all of the staves because, of course, it will be a level that you could use at level 24. So, small downside to if you leveled up too well. You also will not be able to shop that prior to Act 3, so just be aware of that. Wow, three to Nova on a smoked sphere. Oh my god, I wish on my sorceress. Nice, Joshua. Say GG. It's wild how much you click that mouse. I do like uh, to click of the mouse. Uh. Is the repair cost defined by the item cost? I could tell you secret plus two would be very expensive. No, the repair ca ca cast. The repair cost is purely going to be defined by the charges that have been used. So every charge costs about two thousand gold and a little bit, maybe like 2,100, 2,200 gold. So it is expensive, which is why you can't just go teleporting everywhere all the time. Now again, if you have some other character ferrying it in, you can. Hey, Angelics again. Wonder what the two-piece set is. Attack rating, dexterity, and of 75 ED. Okay. Well, nothing we care about, but it's fun. 3k a charge? It's not 3k a charge. Because a full charge of 33 charges is about 72,000, I think. Oh wait, we need to go in here. Just running around. Our low resist charges on a wand more expensive than teleport charges. Um, lower resist charges, I believe, are the same cost, right? But there's more charges on them. Yeah, they're the same cost. 2100 per charge? Perfect. Thank you. Do you save junk rings to roll? I don't really, but you can. So you can always cube three rings to an amulet and three amulets to a ring. So if you want to do that, it can be a nice way to like try and roll for something better. Hey, we have Great Marsh right here. 
go to town and sell a couple things. And now we have to decide if we want to go through the Great Marsh or if we think the Flare Jungle has an offshoot. It seems like this is going to connect right here and it's just going to be a dead end there and we'll have to go through. So, we'll try it. It's okay. Does magic find impact the quality of rings that you cube? No. Magic find and your cube are, are unrelated. I'm doing an Amazon playthrough. I found a gold dagger in the normal tower. I can't believe it when you found one too. I mean, it's happened before. I've probably found on guided playthroughs like two or three gold daggers and then on uh like speed runs you know multiple gold daggers probably like eight or nine overall at least do terror zones increase the level cap of rune drops uh you're already able to find but yes, it, it would if you weren't able to. So yes, it does. Because not all the areas are moved to everything, so. Another point in Fissure. That is one thing. It's like in Nightmare Terror Zones, you can find like high runes and stuff now if you're a high enough level. Jeez, Hark. Can't believe I got to play this game at 34. First time, wow. Can't believe I waited this long and made so many errors. Realized three dimes can't create another two dimes, yeah. I mean, hey, it's all just learning and having fun. Picking up these, uh, you know, just looking for, there's Molten Boulder. Something with like nice plus three to Spirit, uh, or to Firestorm, Fissure. Stuff like that can be nice. Does Mercenary gain levels from fighting? Uh-huh. You don't need to love to bring it around though, because you can always go hire a new mercenary at one level below your level. So Do you think you'll be able to do that in Lama RPG? Do what in Lama RPG? Back in the day, yeah, it was better. But now there's no no reason, no point, no difference. Have fun. I hope so. This is also one of my favorite places to level up, by the way, is the Flare Jungle. We don't really have a great Flare Jungle, but especially on a Fire Druid, with how much quantity there is, you can just get so many levels. Easily can level here to like level 30, high 20s, super easily. Will there be a headhunter belt in Lama RPG? Probably not. Spirit and Enigma in Lama RPG? Probably not as well. Unfortunate garbage ring there. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Six to life. Still probably not enough for me to care. Okay. More vitality. And we'll just keep going fissure right now. Yeah, I mean, Druid is murderously good here. It's insane. 
pick up a couple more chips just in case we need some more gold later or if we want to save it. Favorite team for Pokemon Red speedrun? I mean, I never did any Pokemon Red speedrunning, but... My team had Alakazam... Like, when I just played through. I had Alakazam. I had Jolteon. I had... Charizard. I had... Hmm, what else did I have? Maybe like Lapras. I had a Gengar. I had a Cloyster. And a Blastoise, I think. Maybe I had a different Ice Pokemon. I mean, I had like 50-something level 100s, but... Those were the ones that I like used more often. Then like Mewtwo and Mew. I've got my childhood Pokemon save somewhere. Charizard and Blastoise. I played Pokemon Yellow where you could get all of the Mew? Yeah, I remember you went and went to the truck and Mew was under the truck. Nah, I think one of my friends traded it to me after he hacked it in or something. <laughs> Alright, so now we have our telly staff. And we can use that, like I said, for just skipping portions of the game. Like this. Nice and easy. Expert trainer fly glitch? I don't know. My friend traded it to me. I didn't find it, whatever it was. Sell some of these. Angelics. Don't really quite care enough. And we can keep going. The Mew glitch was built into the game. You go into the gym, glitch the fight, walk up the bridge, click start, catch Mew, and there you go. Which gym was that? You don't remember donating 5k bits? Do I speak Spanish? Eh. Misty's gym? Huh. Interesting. I'll have to go try it out. How do you glitch the fight? I understand some Spanish and can speak a little bit of Spanish, but I don't like... I'm not fluent enough or anything. Like I said, sometimes I keep them to reroll, but not often. Press start as the trainer sees you and fly away. Oh, so you have to have a new game. But you also have to have fly already? I don't think you get fly before Misty. Use an Abra teleport? Okay.
Yeah, Mew wasn't like super stellar, but he could have every item or every move in the game, so that was nice at least. Now, while we're here in the Karast Bazaar, we want to look for the temple that faces to the bottom left. What is the Knife? It's Goldagger. In this temple is Battle Maid Serena, who A, is very good for farming experience. Feel free to just come back and keep killing her. Though honestly on this guy, I'd probably do uh, more Flare Jungle if I wanted to like keep farming. But B, it also has Lame Essence Tome, which you can take. And go get plus to life. more vitality and I'll put a point into volcano now just for funsies impossible and now we just go searching so the way to run it is run clockwise then if you run into the chest the, the sparkly chest Run counterclockwise. That essentially is the best way to go about it. Otherwise, there we go. We have run into the sewers and we're good to go. Grab the orb, maybe a little bit of cash. And we'll move on out. Keep rolling. If you live in Australia, do the reverse of what I just said. Thank you, good reminder. Okay, we can put that away. We can move our leaf over. Go one way if you realize it's wrong, go the other way. No, it's just the chest gives indication of which way the other area is facing, so it can kind of guide you there. That's an interesting well placement. I can't even drink it. <laughs> what is this? I can drink it on... Hector with the ten. Too. The ancients have a naked barb that completed the game to aid for for a time. Hide and seek. Must find a hidden player before the next act. Wall armor. Kill everything in zone. So needing to. Oh gosh, kill everything in zone would be brutal. Those are some brutal ones. All right. So we're on players eight again because this character can just kill things on players eight. how good he is. You can go down to players one if you would like, but you can also stay here and kill them. I can't carry you. And we just morph this. And we're uh, good, we can kind of continue. Those boots pay off for the Hydras. Oh yeah, fire resist is super helpful in this game. So if you can get a little bit of fire resist in before act four and act five, it goes a long way. Okay, now level two, if you wish to farm Mephisto, you can go ahead and grab the waypoint there. I don't think there's a ton of items that you'd really be getting here from normal Mephisto. That would be giant upgrades, but there's definitely some. I mean, again, you can find like your blood fist and stuff, though let's be honest, you can find those prior as well. I got trapped by dolls and no way am I going to kill all of the dolls around me. So that's a nice way that you can escape. Okay. 
We'll go back here and we'll chat. Turn in the the jade figurine. Navy piece. And we'll get the stats and the potion for some more life and vitality. Put these guys away. Durance of hate. Keep rolling. And we'll let them run into their death over here. And nothing there. Gold dagger came first. Be during our playthrough. It's a guided playthrough. Eldrune. And I'm actually going to drop to players one for Mephisto. We could even go to players three if we wanted. And he may be spawned on players eight. We'll just have to see. Yeah, he's good enough. Don't need the bone shield. I can set a TP up just for safety purposes. If I want to use my leaf here, I can. But again, having gold dagger, I'm just like, yeah, I really like gold dagger. And let's see what he drops us. It is nothing, unfortunately. But just like that, act number three is complete. Great job, everybody. Give yourselves a clap. What do you need? Replace our scrolls. Replace our charges if we needed to, which we were pretty good. And we can keep going. Now, here is where I actually like to just stay on players one. You can players eight through act four if you would like to. But one, we're going to go look for Isual. No reason to give him all that extra life. And two, a lot of the mobs have high fire resist and it's just kind of annoying. We play through hell difficulty. Uh, ultimately, this will go through hell difficulty. Today, we're going to just go through normal here. And then... Tomorrow is Wednesday. I'll have to check. Did I stream? I streamed yesterday. If Moo Girl needs me to watch, I think I'm watching the baby tomorrow, so I don't think I'm streaming tomorrow. But on Thursday, we will do part nightmare and part hell. Had a baby? I mean, I didn't have it, but yes. Okay, and we'll kill Mr. Isual. You mean being a father? Yeah, I will be a father tomorrow. Not today. Let's talk to Tyrael, and we'll put one more point in Fissure and one more point in Firestorm. Go back to the City of the Darned. And now we can go forward. Now, doing the Forge, Hellforge here, will be nice. Uh, it's a 1 in 11 chance of getting an Am room. 1 in 1 in 11 chance of getting any of the runes. And specifically, we would like an Am rune. But a Thol rune or an Ort rune would also do us well. As that gets us a little bit closer to making a Spirit, which we'll want when we switch over to Wind. 
So we'll see. Impossible. We will see. to Fisher, continuing to buff the already insanely good damage. And again, if you wish to uh, raise the player count out here, you can. But this is this is really where I like to to cruise P1. The dagger is gall dagger, which is why I'm. I'm choosing it. Now, it looks like Hellforge is going to be over and then up. So we will go this way. I should have left that gem shrine and I could have upgraded one of the gems I, one of the flawless gems I got to a perfect gem. That would have been a good idea. We can go swing at that puppy and call it good. Nice. Tal rune it is. But we have a perfect and a flawless topaz. So if we wanted to, like, put that in a two open socket helm, that could be a lot of magic find, you know? 44% magic find if we did that. But we already have tons of magic find. Now, this is a fantastic belt. 17 hit recovery, 10 to life, 26 light res, and 18 fire res. This is end game levels of, of material right here. Very happy with that belt. We are going to stack up to 45 strength ASAP and use the heavy belt. Because that is godly. Dual useful resistances with hit recovery, and then even just a little life sprinkled in there. Mm. What more could you really ask for? Impossible. What is the weapon of Wino Shield? Gold Dagger, and uh, I just don't feel like I need the shield right now. I mean, a shield would, you know, always be a little more helpful, but. I feel pretty comfortable, so. You watch my Druid Fire playthrough, I use Quick Spells feature, it was very help useful. Yeah! So, I do actually feel like it, it can be pretty useful because they got rid of the global cooldown in this game. So now, you can cast all of the Druid Fire skills at once. Or, you know, one after the other, instead of having to wait each time. So it's actually pretty nice um, turning on the quick cast. This is the character I felt like it, it does the best on, personally. But I also don't mind just bouncing between them all. So here, something is, until you see the blue guy, essentially... The other dudes won't attack you. They'll, they'll, they'll stay on a leash, essentially. So you can kind of outrange a lot of them and kill a majority before you have to go in and actually fight. Oh, boy. That's not good. There you go. Still got myself trapped. Level 94 Fire Druid and couldn't kill D-Clone. Should be able to. Ooh, Broadsword, but it was dropped by... Those Knights. So I think it's only three sockets. Okay. 
Use Diablo's medicine against him? Yeah. Kill fire with fire. Friendly fire in D2R would be awful. <laughs> Is the plan double spirit till the end? No, we won't go double spirit, because finding a monarch shield is something you don't A, do until hell, and B, takes 156 strength, which is just a lot of stats, especially at this point where we don't have stuff like Enigma and things to help out with it. But here we will come across our second fire immune. He will always be fire immune, so this is something that has to be uh, handled. And this is where we can use a variety of physical spells against him if we want. We can also Uh, get a mercenary to help out here. So, multiple options. But, we've already got it down. And hey, there's 20 to life right there, which 45 strength is what we're going to have. And that's better than our current gloves, so, all good. Make sure we're on players one for El Diablo. And we can fissure this bad boy. So Firestorm is actually really nice against him. But, because fissure, he doesn't move around a lot. But you'll kind of have to mix and match depending how he attacks you. Set up a safety portal just in case. And we'll just layer them down with some firestorms and take them out. Gothic plate. Splint mail. Some good money in there. Everybody got Saigons. Take a drink. And some more cold resist. We're just finding cold resist nonstop. And just some decent gold for us. Yeah, we can also check out the war hat. Give it to a mercenary. If we want to bring Emilio back. Oh, level 22 required. Well, I'm level 27. So, just like I talked about before, if you want... To upgrade, make sure to remove the gear, and then just replace them. And now we have a mercenary again. Am I going to stream the awards? What are the awards? Get him, Darcy. Get him. Work. Impossible. 
Act 5 opening sim max was the best. Oh, it's so good. So we can definitely go back to Players 8 now if we want. Where to play this game? Battle.net. It's under classic games though, where you get it. And it goes on sale often, so if it's, I think it's like 40 usually, but it's often on sale for like 30% or something. It's like 13, 15 bucks. 17 dollars, there you go. So, it has nice sales. And yeah, now that we are level 25, we can go through Act 5 and murder everything. If I was not level 25 yet, it is extremely important to go back to the Flare Jungle, or go back to Serena, or whatever, I like Act 3, and get level 25. Otherwise, you just will not get Enough. That crystal sword is probably okay, but not exactly sure. Once you do that, then you can start gaining experience. They they built the game in a weird way, where essentially you don't really get experience for uh, killing monsters if you're not level 25 and they're too high of a level, essentially. But, especially on this character, player aiding all the time and stuff like that, we should have no problems getting there. So we'll save some barbs, because it does give us Ralor Tal, which is Ancient's Pledge, and we'll probably want to use later on. Early Act 5 Crystal Sword is good. I really thought you had to be careful right there. You have to look at the monsters. Because we need at least level 26. So I think that's a 24 or 25. Area level is low, but the monster level is fine. Is it all the monsters? Are, are a high enough level there? Interesting. Did I end up saving all of the barbs? I don't think so. Check out the greaves. Anything after Frigid Highlands Waypoint. See, that's what I thought, but that is before Frigid Highlands Waypoint, which is why it's like maybe chancing it a little bit, you know? Shank is the first. This was one of the guys around Shank, so then I shouldn't do it. Is there any other way to target Burr? That's the fastest way, but again, Chaos, Trav, Cows, you're just kind of, Terror Zones even, you're just kind of going generally at them. But LK is still gonna be your fastest. Yeah, so this was dropped from not Shank, but just a normal, uh, whatever they're called in the Bloody Foothills. All mobs are level 31 in the Bloody Foothills. Enslaved. 
So then that would be fine. Good afternoon. Yeah, a couple more staminas. I mean, we can always test it, and then if it's not, I can just... I have plenty of characters that have socket quests, so I could just use them. Anyways, why we're talking about this is we are looking for a sword that can get four open sockets. Specifically, we are looking for a crystal sword, a broad sword, or a long sword. Goodbye, Mercenary. You did your best. The trouble, the struggle of it is... You need one that's level crystal sword, level 26 to level 41. Broadsword or longsword, just minimum level 26. And then you can take it to the socket quest to get four open sockets. So, not every single monster will always give it to you, so you have to know the areas and monsters that will. According to the people in chat, we should be okay to socket quest that crystal sword. So, we can go and socket quest that crystal sword. And if they're wrong, again, I've got 5,000 other socket quests. If you want to be more certain, just go and find a sword in, like, later portions of Nightmare. And you will be fine. Honestly, I think anywhere in Nightmare should get you. Unless you get a Crystal Sword, that's going to be too high level. So that's why it's good to get a Broad Sword or Long Sword at that point. Additionally, you can always go to Cow's Normal. And any one of those three in Cow's Normal will always give you four open sockets from the socket quest. So... Longsword does have a deck requirement. So, Crystal Sword is 43 strength required, Broadsword is 48 strength required, and a Longsword is 55 strength required and 39 dexterity required. So it does cost a few more stats, but if you have a for certain one that's going to get four open sockets, then you're good. Do you do your playthroughs as a clean start, no hand-me-downs? I do. This just dropped for us. And just like I said, Hisaris' belt joins the mixture where we now get big attack rating. 20 life, 20 cold resist, but this is still better, so. One more level and we'll replace the belt. <laughs> And we'll grab double of that and the grand charm. Take Mr. Bezos's money. Thank you, Shabam Jenkins, for the Twitch Prime sub and giving a little Daddy Bezos money over. I do appreciate that. And for reminding everybody in chat, they may have a Twitch Prime sub, and they're just sitting on it, not using it. Literally just giving it to Daddy Bezos. All right, let's see. So money, 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 money. That's all fine. We'll go collect our runes from Claw Kick. And put this away, this away, this away. And we'll go back to the Crystalline Passage to save Anya. Mm. 
And try and pick up a little experience while we do it. Use your prime sub on Moo. Oh my god. We can grab Armageddon now, which is actually a really fun skill. And we can also use our belt. Huzzah! Beautiful belt. And we can use our Arctic Mitts as well. And we'll put our Leaf Staff on for the Ancient Sway. Does the Anya bug still exist? Does it still exist? I think they fixed it, right? I believe they fixed it. In D2R. It was fixed. Okay. That's it. The bug was if you died, you would lose the resistances. For the, until you left the game. I used Google Rewards to subscribe last month, but then it renewed and charged my card. <laughs> At the mobile rate, Mr. Lama. No! Called. You gotta undo it, re get a refund on it, and then. Just come back. Thank you, Gazanked. It looks like it might be near it. Do you ever think about doing playthrough challenges? Perhaps a no runer challenge? Oh, I've done, yeah, I've done lots of this. If you look around on my YouTube, you'll, you should find plenty of like, gambled items only, naked only, no rune words run, rare items only, whatever stuff. All right, we're gonna go down to players one for the ancients because nobody wants to deal with that. Disco, thank you. And we'll turn on our Armageddon. No healing runs. Ultra hardcore runs are wild. I meant to put that in Fissure. Oh well, we have a second point in Volcano. Which still boosts our Fissure damage, so not the worst thing. Did I save Anya? Wait, I don't know if I actually saved her. I don't think I did. I think I just killed the monsters and left. It's okay, we have the, the portal. Oopsies. Alright, another point to Fissure. And more vitality. No, that was not it. John, thank you very much for the prime sub. Yatigo, thank you much for the sub. Kisses to you both. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Literally stood right next to Anya and then just did not save her. <laughs> Thank you. 
mutations. That's a little brutal. Alright. Let's keep rolling. That ice too cold for me, you're on your own. <laughs> Precisely my thoughts. Darcy Cam. Move. MTG Gaming Bob, thank you very much. You gotta message me about the, the thingy. And Hector with another 10. Thank you so much, Hector. You sent me an email? Okay, I'll go look. MBS Ideas 3. Uh -huh. Relax Llama, massage from Moo Girl. Ooh, I like that. Cold feet, keep feet in ice water for a time. Onion, bite an onion. Chush its law, listen to all options of an NPC. Have a snack, snack of choice. See, now we're talking. I'm liking MVS more and more. Those could be nice on a help wheel. Massage from Moo Girl. Wait, what's that? Laughing. You know I can't get massages? So just a little light something on the shoulders. We can teach you. We can do massage gun, which would be hilarious. You're trying to play <laughs> <laughs> it has on the highest setting. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go up to players eight now. I was players one for the first one. There's a crystal sword. Maybe this will be uh, four socketed. Ah, oh, just missed. I don't think it's able to though, right? Not in normal. Can only drop the three. Yeah. Unfortunate. Safety TPs are also not bad ideas to have. From waves, we might be able to. I don't think anywhere in normal can it drop four sockets. More fissure, more vitality. They sound smart smoking. And things like rubies and stuff, you can toss those in your helm, like... Nice and easy way to get some, uh, life. <laughs> so creepy. But be careful about some of the bases that drop here. Like, if you drop a crystal sword from wave 5 here, it'll probably get 5 sockets. Okay, and then we can just keep going Firestorm. For some more damage here. And as always, if you don't want to kill everything, let's say we kill everybody but Lister and he just has too much life because he's just hard to kill because of the spectral hit. We can actually just avoid that, kill this other minion, and then we can just teleport in 
and Bale will just leave. Now we'll go down to players one for Bale. Is there a way to make a hybrid of fire and wind? Not really well. I mean, you can, but it just it just doesn't work as well. And remember, we don't need Gold Dagger until we actually are about to kill Bale. So we can use our Leaf for the good old damage until that point. Try and line up so all three of the Firestorm pieces run through his body. It can be hard because they kind of have some random pathing, but if you find a good line, you can get a lot of good damage in on him. Yeah, we'll swap over to Gold Dagger here. And there you go. Just like that, congratulations. You are the owner. Hey, Worldstone Keep is uh, the Terror Zone. Beautiful rip hook. Get an act one mercenary for that puppy. You are the beautiful owner of a brand spanking new normal crushing character. Now at this point we are level 34. If we wish we can always, you know, go back, come back in. Give yourselves the clap by the way. And we can farm terror zones, we can do bail runs, we can do whatever things we want for just continuing to level up. Go up to players eight here. It can just be a nice way to get some experience. You can additionally run the cows. Darcy, slow down. If you would like as well for experience. Mix and match, decide how you wish to do it all to get some experience. This is if you want to do that way. Additionally, before we head over, we can go to Act 2 and just shop ourselves a three open socket shield. I'll make sure to put another point there and more points into Vitality. And we can just look for a three open socket, kite shield, or large shield, and this can be useful for our ancient pledge. What up, Ash? Join my army of the dead. Hello. Hello, I would like to order a pizza with extra cheese, please. Any other toppings? Yes, actually, extra cheese, and extra cheese, and extra cheese. Mm -hmm. And extra cheese. Okay. And extra cheese. Uh -huh. And extra cheese. Yep. And extra cheese. A little more, maybe? And extra cheese. So, soup. Cheese soup is what you want. We have not done Radiman. Feel free to go do Radiman if you want. One extra skill point is always nice for these characters. I often just don't do them on guided playthroughs because, well, I don't know, I'm lazy. So you could also take a white kite shield or large shield from here and socket quest it for three open sockets, but then we wouldn't get to use our socket quest for spirit sword. So, you know, little, little sadness there. So we just go back and forth a couple times. Looking for a shield. It is an honor to serve you. I do kind of wish they'd put cycle through gear, you know, on a button right there. It would also make finding things like 320s and stuff much easier. If you could just cycle right there. Can this dagger carry us through hell? I mean, if you want, you can definitely keep it through hell. I'll probably use it as a swap on bosses here and there, but... Otherwise, 
I'll be shifting out to spirit or something because it'll be a little tougher later on. So we can do that and we can also take our crystal sword and see if it actually works. And it does. So we have our four open socket now. And of course, Tal, Thal, Ort, Am is what we need. And then Ral, Ort, Tal will be our Ancient's Pledge. And we can take that all into Nightmare heading forward. So Nightmare uh, Countess will be a good place for us. Like the video about Runeward? Thank you. So here is our ending gear for this character. Here's what yours will most likely look like, I should say. Leaf Staff, random two open socket helm with a tier rune and life, why not? All res six, stealth, 20 to life from the Arctic Mitts, 10 FCR, really nice belt. Again, this will probably take us all the way to hell with this belt. 15% magic find and then some Hisaris booties right there. Then we have our, th our three open socket la large shield and our four open socket sword ready. Again, normal cows is a great place to go find your crystal sword or broad sword or long sword. I would recommend getting a crystal or broad from there um, and using that. And we've got some runes. We can go talk to Anya, get our final helm piece here. And it's okay. It's got a little bit of resistance on it. We'll put it over. It's a little bit better than what we got going, I would say. So always get Gold Dagger, exactly. And with that, we are ready for Nightmare. Mwah! Don't forget to like and subscribe, YouTube. Peace.